What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another Fantasy Football video. Today, it's Friday. You know what time it is. We're going over the wide receiver starts and sits heading into week nine. As you know, playoffs, they're right around the corner. Making the correct start and sit decisions is as important as ever. As per usual, we will be going matchup by matchup, letting you know a bit about each player's floor, their ceiling, and the range in which we have them ranked. Keep in mind, if if you do have two players valued very similarly, you can always utilize the rankings available at our website. Those will tell you exactly which players we would typically start over the other. Members of our website not only gain access to the rankings, you'll have full access to all of our waiver information, the trade model, sports betting picks, DFS picks, and more. So if that interests you, go to our website, thefantasyfootballadvice.com, link as always in the description box below below with that out of the way though let's hop over to the stat of the day yesterday's stat of the day was among running backs with over 75 carries which rusher has seen the highest percentage of eight plus defenders in the box the correct answer was actually mike davis congratulations john jacobs you got this one right as for today's stat of the day since this is a wide receiver video which wide receiver with at least 40 targets is averaging the least amount of separation once again, that's which receiver with at least 40 targets is averaging the least amount of separation. Leave your answer in the comment section down below. We'll be happy to let you know who wins in tomorrow's video. With that out of the way, let's hop right into the first matchup. Chicago at Tennessee. Heading into this matchup, Chicago is nearly a touchdown underdog. Obviously, that promotes a very positive passing game script. So Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney, Anthony Miller, the volume for them could be pretty high this week. Couple that with the fact that Tennessee allows the second most fantasy points to the wide receiver position. They've allowed the most receptions on the season to wide receivers and each Chicago Bears receiver in this game has a ton of upside. You don't need me to tell you Allen Robinson wide receiver one this week. As for Anthony Miller we can't say for certain he will play. If he doesn't play the volume for Allen Robinson as well as Darnell Mooney likely to increase so Darnell Mooney actually makes a pretty good flex this week with the Titans being so bad against opposing receivers Chicago also being a touchdown underdog Mooney he definitely has the upside we're looking for in that flex role and that's not to say Mooney doesn't have a floor he's averaged six targets over the past three weeks never dipping below five so if there's a chance even with Miller playing that he loses some snaps Darnell Mooney is likely to see even more volume on the other side of the ball for Tennessee AJ Brown the matchup against Chicago it's not exactly fruitful but at the same time he's an elite talent one of the few wide receivers in the league that can turn six receptions into 150 plus yards so even in a more difficult matchup we still have him ranked as a high-end wide receiver too as for Corey Davis, yes, I get that it's scary to trust him in the flex. He's Corey Davis, of course, disappointed us all through the years, but he's been playing lights out. Yes, this is a difficult matchup, but there has not been one game this season in which you would have been disappointed with your start of Corey Davis. Don't get us wrong, though. We still don't have him ranked inside the top 30. Either way, though, we definitely see him as a high floor flex play. The next matchup we have, Detroit versus Minnesota. This game has one of the highest projected totals of the week. Big news here though, Kenny Galladay, he's unlikely to play. Obviously, that's a major boost to the other Detroit receivers, Marvin Jones. We actually have him ranked as a back-end wide receiver too in this matchup. Minnesota has now allowed three receiving touchdowns to wide receivers over the past two weeks. The two prior weeks to that, they still allowed two receiving touchdowns to wide receivers. And we can't forget Marvin Jones, whenever he plays Minnesota he just happens to have a good game they have not yet faced each other this year and yes Marvin Jones always has that potential to bust but with Kenny Galladay being out he's the favorite to likely lead this team in targets 
As for Quintez Cephas, Marvin Hall, Danny Amendola, while yes, each one of those receivers has their upside and potential, Marvin Hall tying Marvin Jones for lead high in targets last week, but it still wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if Danny Amendola pushes for lead in targets in this game, Quintez Cephas, his role could potentially be limited. So while yes, each player, they do have a case for how they could succeed, it's too risky to trust any single one of these receivers behind Marvin Jones because they really don't have a fully established role. For that reason, we're leaving them on the bench. As for Minnesota though, this is a really good game for both Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson, both of which we have ranked inside the top 12. Justin Jefferson, more of a back-end wide receiver one, high-end wide receiver two, and yes, his range of outcomes, they're pretty wide, but it's likely Jefferson will receive more volume than he usually does, and in both games where he was heavily targeted, he had really, really big performances. Week three against Tennessee, he had seven receptions for 175 yards and a touchdown. That was on just nine targets. Then back in week six against Atlanta, 11 targets, nine receptions 166 yards to go along with two touchdowns if this game does end up shooting out jefferson could definitely perform as a top five wide receiver but due to the risk we do have to rank him a bit lower and as for adam thielen his floor definitely much higher so we feel confident in a bounce back from adam thielen this week we have him ranked as a mid-grade wide receiver one the next matchup we have new york giants versus washington with this game if you own a New York Giants receiver either Sterling Shepard or Darius Slayton I would definitely look for other options Washington has quietly been one of the better teams at defending opposing fantasy receivers and the total in this game is a mere 42 and a half points the upside we're typically looking for from Darius Slayton is much more unlikely these two teams have actually faced each other back in week six and yes Darius Slayton did get the job done but he only had two receptions had he not caught that touchdown the outlook for his whole fantasy day that week would have looked completely different we have Darius Slayton ranked as the wide receiver 30 this week Sterling Shepard outside the top 36 so it's very likely you do have better options available to you as for Washington the only receiver we're considering of course Terry McLaurin in this game against the Giants he makes a really solid start this week we have him ranked as a back-end wide receiver one the last time he faced the Giants he had a whopping 12 targets converted that into seven receptions 74 yards and I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to top that this week the next matchup we have Seattle versus Buffalo we don't really need to mention much about Seattle you're starting Tyler Lockett you're starting DK Metcalf both players wide receiver ones and likely to remain that way for the remainder of the season season as for buffalo though stefan diggs of course always a solid start but in this particular matchup his upside will be that much greater seattle they've given up the most fantasy points to wide receivers by a large margin and for that reason, Stephon Diggs is ranked inside of our top five. As for Cole Beasley, John Brown, we definitely believe they make solid flex plays this week. We have Cole Beasley ranked a bit higher. His floor, much safer. His involvement, it's been much higher as of late. So Cole Beasley, just inside the top 36. John Brown, a bit more risky, but still inside the top 40. The next matchup, we have Baltimore versus Indianapolis. This is a matchup with two really solid defenses the Colts they really don't have any wide receivers we can trust T.Y. Hilton at this point if you're starting him you have to expect the worst and we don't have any Indianapolis receiver ranked inside the top 50 on the other side of the ball for Baltimore there's Marquise Brown we do have him ranked as a back-end wide receiver two high-end wide receiver three and while Indianapolis is a scary defense on paper they're actually only middle of the pack at defending opposing receivers and with Baltimore not coming into this game as favorites Marquise Brown he definitely has the tools to succeed this week up next Carolina Panthers on the road against Kansas City Carolina is coming into this game as massive 10 point underdogs obviously passing game script likely to be a factor for the entire game for Carolina 
But even with that, we can't discredit the strength of the Kansas City defense against opposing receivers. This game does in fact have the second highest projected total of the week, but we've seen time and time again, solid receivers, they struggle against Kansas City. We wouldn't be surprised despite a positive passing game script for the Panthers if either DJ Moore or Robbie Anderson actually disappoints in this matchup. Regardless though, the volume is still likely to be there. For that reason, we have them ranked as back-end wide receiver twos this week. Both players, in fact, we have ranked inside of our top 20. So if you own them, you're likely playing them. We're going to hope for the best, but know there's always that chance for them to disappoint. As for Kansas City, you don't need me to tell you. Tyreek Hill, auto start. We have him locked as a top five wide receiver this week. The only other Kansas City receiver that we would potentially consider would be Miko Hardman, who is coming off of a very high volume game. But the New York Jets, they're a much weaker passing defense as opposed to Carolina. The entire game was also more of an outlier. Even though the Panthers are expected to lose by potentially 10 points, the New York Jets got completely blown out. This game is much more likely to be closer. In a closer game, weapons like Travis Kelsey would will get much more volume and unfortunately that will come at the expense of players like Hardman so for that we have him ranked as the wide receiver 48 up next Houston at Jacksonville for Houston Will Fuller has actually now caught a touchdown in five straight games this week against Jacksonville it's very likely that trend will continue lock him in as your wide receiver too. feel really good about it because he's playing consistently he's producing each week and there's no reason to expect that to change as for Brandon Cooks his involvement has been increasing last game was actually his first game getting double digit targets on the season the connection and chemistry with Deshaun Watson it's building it looks grown and there's no reason to expect that his production should diminish we have now bumped him up in the rankings he is listed as our wide receiver 24 and despite the Houston Texans being nearly a touchdown favorite in this game we still feel very confident in both of these Texans receivers on the other side of the ball though for Jacksonville, it's been really difficult to trust any single receiver in this offense. It seems like the target distribution, the consistency by each player, it's had a lot of variance each week. So even a player like DJ Chark, who we know always has the opportunity to pop off, we unfortunately had to drop him in the rankings despite this being a really solid matchup. We have him ranked just inside the top 30. So for those of you out there, wondering if you should flex him yes we still think he has the upside worth a flex just be aware of the risks that go along with it but still putting him in your flex spot negates a lot of that risk of you expecting him to perform LaVisca Chenault we do have also ranked inside the top 36 like we said this is a really juicy matchup Houston Texans they've allowed the 27th most fantasy points to wide receivers and considering both of these guys are the most involved in their offense each one of them has a good chance to produce the next matchup we have Denver versus Atlanta we'll start with Atlanta because it's a bit more simple Calvin Ridley he's injured that will be an obvious upgrade to potentially Russell Gage Hayden Hurst as for Russell Gage one thing to keep in mind is that this is a game against Denver their offense it's not exactly high powered their defense it's much more solid expecting this to be a very high scoring game or a shootout while it is a possibility the much more likely outcome is that Denver slows the game down which will overall limit the opportunities for Russell Gage for Hayden Hurst so even in the absence of Calvin Ridley they may not be able to fully capitalize as for Julio Jones we have him ranked inside the top five on the other side of the ball Jerry Judy this is very likely his best matchup of the entire season if you're a Judy owner Owner, this is very likely the matchup that you're going to want to get him in your lineup we wouldn't suggest to force it or anything we have him ranked just inside the top 30 as a solid wide receiver three and in this matchup he brings more upside to the table than he has throughout the entire season outside of Judy though we're really not trusting the other Denver receivers they haven't shown enough on a consistent basis for us to feel comfortable even in a solid matchup but let's move into the next 
next one las vegas versus the la chargers let's start with the raiders on that side it's pretty simple yes nelson Aguilar has produced throughout this season but we really think the only player you could potentially flex it definitely has to be henry ruggs he has now had seven targets in back-to-back -back games the chargers also push a game script to where these games are becoming shootouts even denver put up 30 points against them just a week ago it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that this game has one of the highest totals of the entire week and if that actually does hold true Ruggs is definitely a player who has a chance to score on a big play so while yes it is going to be a bit risky trusting starting him we believe the upside will definitely make up for the risk but no other receiver for Las Vegas were starting outside of him on the other side of the ball for the Chargers obviously Keenan Allen is an auto start he had nine receptions last week 10 receptions the week before that so it's really difficult to find a player with a higher floor than Keenan Allen Mike Williams he also makes a good start this week he's built himself a clear and defined role in this offense the connection he has with Herbert has also been developing and unlike Keenan Allen Mike Williams only needs a handful of targets in order to put that into a really massive fantasy performance getting that type of player into your flex spot brings a massive amount of upside keep in mind though he is always a risk to exit the game early with injury but if he doesn't it's unlikely that you will be disappointed with his production up next Pittsburgh versus Dallas unfortunately for the Dallas side of the ball due to the inefficiency at quarterback we have to drop all of the receivers Amari Cooper he's not even ranked as a wide receiver two for us this week we do still have him ranked though as a high end three as for CD Lamb we have him as a back end three just keep in mind even though this is a game against Pittsburgh Pittsburgh throughout this season really hasn't been that bad to opposing fantasy receivers if the quarterback play can improve we can see a world where each of these receivers does potentially have a good game but unfortunately none of the quarterbacks quarterbacks have really shown us anything to get excited about. As for Pittsburgh, the total amount of upside will be capped. They are, of course, 14-point favorites. And with the talent they do have it running back, the likelihood that they need to throw late in this game, there's just a very small chance of that. If we are ranking them in order, it would be Juju and Deontay, very close in the rankings. Each of them we do have as a wide receiver too. And Chase Claypool rounding out as a high-end three back end two himself. Moving on, Miami versus Arizona starting with Miami it's difficult for us to trust any Miami receiver Devontae Parker included because we really don't know what to expect out of Tua the Arizona defense is a bit underrated we've seen them shut out fairly solid receivers throughout this season so if Tua struggles or looks anything like he did last week the floor for both Devontae Parker or potentially Preston Williams it could be extremely low for that though we can't trust him as anything more than a flex which means Preston Williams we're definitely not considering starting as for Arizona DeAndre Hopkins bona fide top five receiver each and every week the spread in this game it's actually not lopsided in the favor of Arizona so the passing game script for the receivers like Christian Kirk will likely be in effect throughout the entire game so if you wanted to start Kirk as a potential wide receiver three maybe an upside flex player we 100% support that decision moving on New Orleans versus Tampa Bay big news here Michael Thomas we're expecting him to suit up if he does we're locking him in as a high end two back end one his involvement in this offense there's no reason to expect they're going to start him slow they didn't rush him back and this is a divisional game against the Buccaneers which has serious playoff implications if of course Michael Thomas does suit Suit up. That means Traquan Smith, Emmanuel Sanders. There's no way you could start either of them. Tampa Bay, they're no slouch on defense. They currently rank top 10 at mitigating fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. So with the volume for both of those receivers likely coming down if Michael Thomas does suit up, there's just no way you could feel confident starting either of them. As for Tampa Bay, I'm sure the question you all have is what to do with Antonio Brown. Our opinion, we would say to start him. We saw in his 
Brady's first game in New England. They wanted to feature him, show that they made the right choice in signing him. And in his first game as a Patriot, he was one of the top receivers of the week when it came to producing fantasy points. While yes, that's a different team, of course, we still have the connection with quarterback. Just don't be surprised if he's on a limited amount of snaps. Of course, he doesn't know the offense all that well. And with the talent of both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, it's not as if they can't get the job done without him. As for Godwin, we have him ranked as a high-end 2, back-end 1. That is, of course, projecting that he plays this week. If he doesn't, the likeliness of Antonio Brown having a solid performance, that just increases along with it. As for Mike Evans, if we're expecting Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown to be available, unfortunately for him, it does seem as though his target market share is likely to be reduced. Mike Evans, though, we have ranked just outside the top 20 so definitely still a starter just one that comes with a bit more volatility than others in that range the final matchup we have new england patriots versus the new york jets unfortunately i wish i didn't have to close on this game there really isn't any player i say is a must start the closest thing to that is probably jameson crowder but there's no even guarantee that he plays this week if he does i would feel very confident starting him in your flex spot this this is a player who has had double digit targets in every healthy game and with the Jets coming in as seven point home underdogs the volume for Crowder is likely to be there in this game as well as for the New England Patriots the highest ranked receiver we have is Jacoby Myers, but with them being such heavy favorites and the likeliness of a run heavy game script, we really just can't even suggest you go there in the flex. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. We really hope you enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting that like button? If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you all for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.